my name is Nina and I'm a skin camouflage practitioner at Changing Faces and I'm now just going to share my screen with you as well. Perhaps the aim of skin camouflage for vitiligo is to reduce the appearance, helping to distract the focus of others. And we do this with the oops. And we do this with the use of specialist creams and powders. So if you visit a clinic where we do face-to-face -face consultation, this will be roughly the setup that you see when you arrive. So we have many different skin cut tones of creams to choose from and a selection of different colour powders that we also choose from. The camouflage products that we use at Changing Faces are long lasting and they are also waterproof. So Eric mentioned about going on the beach and swimming and swimming in pools. Um, these products will stay on when you swim. You could also go in the sauna and steam rooms and you could also exercise in gyms and if it was fire quite a lot, they would still stay on. The products are usually available on the NHS in the UK. However, this can vary from um, depending on the local policy of your GP surgery. So to consultation, um, we will match your unaffected skin colour with one of the creams that we have. When we make a, a skin match, we want you to help us choose. You know the colour of your skin uh, better than we do. We'll find some really good colours and it could be a choice of two or three. And we do want you to be involved in choosing the colour that, that you like. Now, vitiligo can affect obviously more than one part of the body and with different colours naturally in the different parts of the body. So each different area will need a separate skin match and it may end up that you have two or three different creams to use on the different areas. So once we've matched up um, a cream and that you like, uh, we then need to match up uh, with a powder as well. And the powder application is a really important stage as it's this what makes the cream long lasting and waterproof. So once we apply the powder, uh, we need to put it on with, we usually use a cotton ball pad and we press it into the skin. And once it's on the skin, you will look quite flowery. That's what we're aiming for when applying the powder. We need to leave this flowery look on the skin for about 10 minutes, and then we brush off the excess with a, a fluffy brush. And it's, it's this important process of the 10 minute wait, which gives it its waterproof effect. So once we um, matched up the creams and the powders, and you're happy with the choice of colour that we've found, we will then show you how to use the products and um, how to apply them yourself and the best tools to, to use. In clinic, we tend to use brushes and sponge applicators to apply the creams. However, there is no wrong or right way of applying the creams. And if you prefer to use fingers, that's absolutely fine. It's whatever is happy for you uh, and the speediest way um, that you can do it as well. At first, it does take practice, but the more you do it, the more you use the application methods, the faster you'll become, and it'll just be part of your daytime routine if you choose you want it on on that day. Another product that you can use after applying all the creams and powders is something called a fixing spray or setting spray. So it depends on the brand to whether they call it a fixing spray or a setting spray. And now there are so many available on the market 
Um, almost every cosmetic company produces a fixing spray um, for their brand. So what a fixing spray is, is a water-based formula that contains ingredients to help prolong the life of the skin camouflage. So they help against uh, smudging, creasing and fading. You don't have to use one of these, but if you feel that you just want that extra little bit of help making sure it does stay on, um, then this is a good, a good choice to use. The one on the screen is actually an aerosol, but they do come in pump form as well. We don't recommend that you squirt one of these straight onto your face. Um, on the body, yes. On the face, we would recommend you apply it to your fingers first and apply it onto your face using just a gentle dabbing technique with your fingers. One of the challenges that we come across quite often whoops, when trying to match up skin camouflage on the Tilago is we'll get the perfect colour, you'll be happy with it, you think it's perfect, and we put it on your Tilago, and some reaction takes place and the skin tone cream starts turning orange. When this happens, what we can do is use an orange colour block. So this is where we put an orange colour over the vitiligo, first of all. We then need to set the orange colour block with the powder. And as I said, we need to wait 10 minutes before we then brush off the excess with a fluffy brush. And then once that's done, we'll apply the skin tone cream that we found that you liked. Again, we need to then powder once more, wait 10 minutes, and then brush off. So ideally, if we can get away without using a blocker, we will, because obviously the more creams you have to put on, the longer the application process. But if the creams are turning orange, there is something that we can do about it. The particular cream on screen is by a brand called Dermacolor, and the orange tone that we use in that, the color is called D30. So I'm going to show you some before and after pictures of camouflage that's been applied to vitiligo. So it's important um, when applying creams, um, the camouflage creams, to apply a sun cream first of all. The camouflage creams don't contain any SPF at all. So it's really important that you protect your skin before applying the creams. So we recommend a factor 50 or a sunblock. Once you've applied your sun cream, you need to wait 20 minutes before applying your camouflage cream. And that's just so that the tacky residue that you get on your skin once you've applied the cream has a chance to disappear. If for any reason you don't have time to wait 20 minutes, if you blot off the tacky residue in the tissue, then you'll be fine to apply your creams straight away. So while the camouflage products do have the ability to stay on the skin for up to three days, and they just wear off gradually, we do recommend that they are removed from the face each evening. Also, you will need to remove them from the body if you are going out in the sun um, because you need to reapply the sun, sun cream. That obviously won't stay on for three days or have effect for three days. So if you're inside, it's not really a problem. You leave it on your body for up to three days. But going out in the daylight, sunlight, you need to make sure that you're protected with your sun cream. So to remove the products, you need to use an oil-based cleanser. So just as a general rule, the thicker the cleanser, um, probably the more oil content it has in it. So something nice and creamy will get off the camouflage products. They don't come off easily with water and soap. 
So you are able to shower while having them on and they will still stay on. Obviously, if you rub with a towel, you'll, they will come off more easily. But if you just dab your skin dry, then the camouflage will stay on. Now, this particular image um, is slightly different from the others, and I don't know whether you've picked up why, but this particular technique is called reverse colour camouflaging. So you can see with this young lady, her natural skin tone, you can see the neck is darker. And so instead of applying a skin tone to match the natural colour of her neck, we've gone lighter and lightened her neck. Um, and sometimes when it's a larger area, the client does prefer is to do this rather than darken all the skin. So after you've been to see us in clinic, we send you um, a questionnaire or a survey and we get some wonderful feedback from our clients, which I'd like to share with you. So as you can see, some of the comments that we get are very positive um, and quite powerful words that people use. Uh, life changing. They've got the confidence back. Confidence to wear t-shirts and shorts. How it's made a huge difference. How they found it empowering. And also the important one is being able to make a choice. So how do you access the Changing Faces Skin Camouflage Service? Well, you can do this in uh, two different ways. You can either get a referral from a healthcare professional, such as your GP or a dermatologist, or you can refer yourself. And to refer yourself, you just need to go onto the Changing Faces website and register your interest in a skin camouflage appointment. We offer face-to-face -face appointments, sessions online and over the phone. Now, the sessions online and over the phone, we can't do a skin colour match. That has to be face-to-face. -face. But clients have said that the online sessions and over the phone are very, very useful uh, for them um, because they may be nervous about going out and seeing us face-to-face. So it gives them some... Um, encouragement and confidence to then later on have a face-to-face -face consultation with us. And also um, the online sessions in particular, which started over COVID, um, and I did take part in those, the clients found it really useful because we got them to tip their makeup bags out, have a look what products they've got, find out how they were using them already, and give them pointers in better ways of application so that they got a better coverage from them. Now the picture that you can see of one of our camouflage practitioners, that's on the homepage of our website. So if you do want to make a set of referral, if you scroll down to that particular image and click on it, it will take you to uh, the skin camouflage page where you can self-refer, but also there's some really useful tips on there and some very short videos which show you application techniques, um, which are even when you've been to clinic, if you forget what we've said, or you forget the technique that we've shown you, you can have a refresher by having a look on the website. So the one thing that I want to, you to take away about camouflage is it gives us a choice over our appearance and a sense of control, how you want to look from day to day. So what I want to do now is show you a few products available on the high street um, that are very, very well um, available particularly from larger chemists and also from good supermarkets. Uh, so the first one is foundations. So 
foundations, words to look out for when looking for a foundation is um, full coverage or highly pigmented. They're the ones that are going to give you the better coverage on the vitiligo. Avoid the ones that say sheer or natural cover. The next one is concealers. So the concealers, they come in, I've just got a little concealer wheel here. So they come in different colours. So you ideally need to match up your skin colour to a concealer, as you would your foundation. And the concealers can be used in uh, a few different ways. The first way that we all know probably is by just putting it directly onto your skin and then putting your foundation over the top. But you can actually then put concealer over the top of your foundation. You could either do one or the other, or you could do both for extra coverage. Another little trick is to mix your concealer in with your foundation, and that will make your foundation have a much better cover um, than using it on its own. You do need to set your foundation and concealers in the same way I've just mentioned how we set the camouflage creams to help them have extra staying power um, and so they don't slide off your skin. You could then still use the fixing or setting spray over the top if, if you wanted to. Now with vitiligo, we often see eyebrows and eyelashes with little patches in them where the hair's been affected. So eyelashes, obviously you can use a mascara, but you can also use the mascara on your eyebrows as well. Um, so you can get different colours of mascara, black, brown, and icy grey mascara as well, if, um, if that's the colour that you need. The other eyebrow products that you can get is... Um, you can get specialist powders that are brow powders in little palettes. And I've just got one here to show you. So this particular palette um, has got the, the white colour you can see is actually petroleum jelly. And that's, the idea behind that is that you apply that first to keep your high eyebrow hairs where you want them to be. And then you would go over the top with one of the colours. Um, all these powders are or eyeshadows, even though the silver is a particular brow product, they're just an eyeshadow. So you could use, um, you know, match your eyebrow up with um, any eyeshadow just to give it a go. This particular palette I've got does come with um, little brushes. The best brush to use on your eyebrows is, I don't know if you can see that, but the brush is actually slanted and it's quite stiff. It's, it's not a soft brush like an eyeshadow brush would be, although you could use an eyeshadow brush. With this brush, you would then go onto your eyebrow with the powder on and just gently brush over. And that gives a really natural look if you're um, patching up vitiligo in eyebrows. Um, I spoke about the orange concealer um, that was available of the D30 with the Dermacolor, but you can actually get orange concealers in the high street. This one is um, it's from Superdrug, although uh, if anyone is in America, it's the American brand mix. Um, so that's a good one for you to try if you just want a high street product. Um, we do get clients as well where vitiligo has affected the lips and usually the ones I've seen in the clinic, it's been a patch of the lips and not all the lip and gentlemen and ladies. And one of the products that are available on the market now that are very, very successful is um, lip tint or lip um, ink, sometimes they're called, or lip stains. So these aren't really in the form of a lipstick as in the tube that you wind up. They're more in the form of what you would perhaps find a, a gloss in. And they come with, um, usually with the applicator. 
So to look for these, uh, I mentioned lip ink and lip stay, and some brands have um, up to 12 hours or up to 16 hours written on them. So you know that that's the sort of product it is. It's something that's going to stay in your lips and be quite long lasting. Now, while the one I'm showing you that I've got is bright pink, you can get very natural colours in them. Um, so if you are a gentleman or, or a lady and you don't want it to be up here, but you have actually got lip colour on, you probably will be able to match a really good match it with your own skin, uh, your own lip colour. Quite often, some of them um, come with two products in one. One is the actual lip stain and the other product is the gloss. So if you don't want them glossy, and not everybody does want glossy lips, if you want it to look natural as though you've got nothing on, so just apply the lip stain and leave off the gloss. But if you do want to give that little bit of gloss and moisture to your lips, then obviously that's what the other product's for within the kit. But one thing that I did need, wanted to mention to you as well, uh, going back to eyelashes and brows, is another alternative is um, lash and brow tinting, which you can do yourself at home, you can buy home kits, but I would recommend that you went to a professional salon for it doing. They will give you a patch test at least 24 hours before you have the treatment uh, to see if you are sensitive to the products. If not, and you can go ahead having the tinting done. On the eyebrows, the tint will last between two and four weeks, uh, just fading gradually. And if you're going in sunlight, um, it fades it more quickly. And on the eyelashes, it will last between four and six weeks. You can prolong the life of lash and brow tinting by wearing sunglasses, uh, but that's just a little bit, well, semi, semi permanent if you want something that's a little bit longer lasting. And the advantage lash tinting has over mascara is lash tinting will only colour the lashes, it won't thicken and lengthen like mascara does, making it look as though you have got a product on your lashes. So um, that's it from me, and I hope you can take something away from it, some useful information, and possibly try the service, or try something yourself at home. Um, so thank you for listening. Oh, thank you so much, Nina. That was really insightful and informative. Thank you so much. Um, and I think one of the is camouflage makeup it can often be a very taboo subject, um, but it's really important, like Nina said, that people are able to make a choice and not feel guilty for covering their skin. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So I'm just having a look to see if there are any questions. Um, so feel free to type any in that you want to. Um, okay, so we just had a question. So um, from Anjana, so she says, thank you for your presentation. Um, I do get and use Dermacolor creams and fixing powder through the NHS. Are there any online tutorials? Uh, the, if it's Dermacolor you have, they do have online tutorials on their website, I believe. Um, I've recently been looking um, how to cover up various conditions and I've had a look on YouTube um, where there are a few on YouTube and if you type in Dermacolor, it is Dermacolor ones that come up. There are other brands as well, um, Veil, and they've got some very, very good tutorials on their website. Um, and again, they have the tutorials on YouTube. Um, there's also another brand, Keramask, which you could have a look to see if they've got tutorials on their website. I haven't actually looked on the Keramask website myself to see these tutorials. Um, so, but also do have a look at the videos on the Changing Faces website. Um, that is application technique rather than how to cover up specific conditions. Uh, but there are some very good tutorials out there, particularly on YouTube where uh, people with vitiligo are showing you on themselves. Brilliant. Thank you. And then we've got a question from Dale. What is the difference between makeup and cover-up? Um, so 
if, if you mean cover up as in the camouflage creams, um, the camouflage creams are okay, classed as, I'd say so. Ah, so camouflage creams are classed as medical creams. Um, we don't co- really call them makeup because they are much more than that. And whereas your high street makeup will possibly um, come off after 12 hours, um, the camouflage creams will stay on for up to three days. They're very highly pigmented, much more pigmented than what your high street uh, cosmetics are. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I think that's it for the questions. Thank you again, Nina, for joining us.